Welcome to today's homeowner with Danny Lipford, expert advice on improving your home. From the pages of today's homeowner magazine and remodeling contractor Danny Lipford. Well, we've got a special show for you this week. We're in Southern California, San Diego. You know, when you think of Southern California, you think of great weather and great scenery. Well, if you live in an area with a great climate, you tend to do more outdoor entertaining. So a deck would be a great addition to your home. Now, when most people think of decks, they think of wood decks, which can be very high maintenance. But there's several alternatives to wood decks that we'll show you in this week's show. Also, if you already have a wood deck, we'll share with you some great tips on how to maintain that deck. When we come back, we'll visit with my friend and fellow remodeler, Steve Lusk. Stay with us. Steve, I love the glass, how it goes together on the bay window. I'm with Steve Lusk, who's a remodeling contractor here in the San Diego area. And Steve, of all the decks that I've built over the years, I don't believe I've ever built one on the front of the house like this one. Well, Danny, the location of the house, the orientation to the west, the ocean in the distance, the expanse of the La Jolla Country Club across the street, it's really the perfect place. What better place, frankly, to have dinner or cocktails than here in the late afternoon? Well, it's, it's positioned real well, and I know it must be a challenge when you have the topography of a lot like this that such a drop from this area all the way down to the street. I can imagine getting the materials up and down and that sort of thing. Well, this is true, and the, the fact that it had to be low profile, close to the ground, we, we had to resort to a concrete slab and actually screwing the material to the concrete slab in order to keep the profile low uh, with the view and the proximity to the front door and the kitchen etc they wanted low okay now tell me about the glass you know uh, we certainly um, never use glass in my part of the country uh, what's the main reason well here it's really two things it's the view and the windbreak for the evening uh, moist air. San Diego is a wonderful place during the day, but at night the marine layer rolls in. It's a little chilly. And uh, add that to the breeze, and it can be downright uh, uncomfortable out here without some sort of protection or auxiliary heat. I see. Okay. And some accent lights, I guess. What, 12 volt? Right, 12 volt halogen uh, spaced around the deck for soft area lighting. And uh, it's pretty romantic out here after the sun goes down. I can see where it would be. Now, um, a material like this positioned so close to the ground, I'm sure you have to use a material that'll really hold up well. Danny, for this application, we chose a wood polymer product called Trex. Now, I've heard a lot about Trex, seen it at a lot of the trade shows. I've never had an opportunity to really use it, but tell our viewers exactly what is the material. Well, it's a well, it's a combination of wood and plastic uh, scrap, actually. I see. Uh, it's impervious. It's guaranteed for 20 years. It's made in uh, dimensional lumber sizes. It is maintenance-free. Uh, you, while you can paint it, I always recommend not to. Mother Nature turns it this uh, standard driftwood gray color. Now, how long has this been down, approximately? This deck's been down exactly a year. I see, okay. And it's, when it's wet, it's slip resistant. Uh, it's really easy to take care of. I, uh, I just don't know of anything on the market I like better. What about cost on this? Naturally, it would be a little bit more than any type of um, wood product, but just a ballpark, what would it run installed? Installed, you should figure between 20 and $25 a square foot for all the materials and labor to, to build either a deck like this or even one over a pressure treated structure. I see. Now, of course, that's a good bit more than, than wood, but really when you figure in all the maintenance that goes into some of the wood decks and all that you have to do, pretty soon that kind of equals out, doesn't it? It certainly does. The maintenance catches up very quickly with the lesser expensive products. Over three to five years, your, your time and money ahead putting down a deck like this, be, uh, not to mention the extra time to play golf and Sure. Do whatever else you'd like to do in this that, community. That means a lot. It certainly <laughs> does. Well, Steve, um, great craftsmanship. It's a great material and certainly a great view. Next, our simple solution. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and today's Homeowner Magazine repair and maintenance editor Joe Truini show you this week's simple solution. Brought to you by Dodge. 
You know, a squeegee like this is a perfect tool for cleaning most glass, but when you have a window that has a 6 over 6 configuration, it does very, very little good. You can use a standard size squeegee like this to clean this type of window, but what you need to do first is cut it down to custom fit the exact glass panes on your window. First use a screwdriver to pry up the clamp that holds it to the handle, then slide out the metal frame and remove the rubber squeegee blade. Use a pair of scissors to cut the blade to exactly the same width as the glass, and then take a hacksaw and trim the metal frame to about a quarter inch less than the glass. Then you reassemble the squeegee and use a pair of pliers to pinch it closed. And the result is a custom cut squeegee that's sized exactly to fit your glass panes. Well, Joe, that works great, and there's plenty more windows around back. Yeah, thanks, Danny. Well, we've made it to an area that's northeast of San Diego, a place called Rancho Santa Fe. And the subdivision we're in has some very large lots and some very impressive views of the mountains and valley that surround this area. And this 20-year-old house that you see behind me is no exception. It really has a nice view on the rear of the house. Now, to take advantage of that view, the homeowners have contracted with deck specialist George Gregoriev to build them a unique and virtually maintenance-free deck. Let's catch up with George around back. Well, you can see they've already gotten most of the framing up and the foundation on, and it looks like, George, you're putting in the last bit of cross blocking here. Yes, we have just a few more blocks to go in to finish up all the substructure here. Now, I can see why the homeowners wanted to develop this view. I mean, it's it's really great, nice valley, but there's so much activity going on out there. What's going on? Well, this area has been dormant forever, and just recently, in the last year, they decided to build a golf course here and a multitude of uh, estate-sized homes here. Oh, that's going to change it quite a bit, but still a dramatic view with the mountains in the background and that type of thing. But tell us about the deck that you have going here. It's a three level, I see. Yes, originally it was one level that's coming out of the living room right here. And the client wanted a, a little bit more dramatic uh, access out to the backyard, so we decided to add another level here. And then she decided she wanted a spa back here. So to keep the spa away from the living room windows, we decided to lower it on a third level to keep it... Uh, out of sight from the living room. Okay, I assume you'll have some stairs connecting everything yes. from the lower, from the upper to here as well as over to this? Yes, we'll have two sets of stairs, one set of stringers right here, another set coming down to the lower area. Well, George, I'm curious, where's your crew? I'm the crew. Okay. I am uh, I can control the quality of the construction here. Uh, I use my pneumatic nailer, so hand nailing is really not non-existent and uh, it goes quicker that way. What about digging of the footings, that type of thing? Well, the footings are dug with the little machine that we have right over here. It's, uh, it's a one-man one -man show, basically. Don't need anybody to dig the footings, pour the concrete. They have an attachment there that we can pour the concrete and right in place. That makes it a lot easier then. And you don't have to worry easier. about whether those workers will show up every morning. That's correct. It's there <laughs> when I'm here. Perfect. Now take us through some of the construction part of this as far as, of course, naturally any project like this starts with the foundation. Um, how deep did you have to go with this particular foundation? We've got 24 inch deep footings here and they're 24 inch round and then we have our, our zinc plated brackets coming right out of the concrete with our pressure treated posts. And then we got our double 2 by 10 dug fur beams running the entire length. Okay, and uh, I notice you have these on uh, 24 inch centers. I also notice uh, screws over here. Yeah, I like to use screws because I got to control exactly where the boards are going and it makes for a lot more solid construction than nails which can wake, work their way in and out of the wood. Also zinc plated? Yes. Okay, all right. Now um, I also notice on this um, in terms of the 24 inch centers that uh, you've kind of beefed it up over in that other side. Now is that where the spa will be? Yes, the spa is going to go in that area of the deck. I can see where you would need the 12 inch centers to really support that spa. What about any other additional blocking out in there? Yes, we're going to continue the same blocking in mid-span across the entire deck here. You know, this is a real important aspect of building decks is when you're designing the framing for the deck is think about if you'll ever have a spa or whirlpool positioned on the deck anywhere and then provide enough support for it so that the weight of it won't be a problem later on. If you think of an average spa being 300 gallons, at 8 pounds per gallon you're talking about 2,400 pounds in a concentrated area. But with the blocking you have here, it shouldn't be any problem. What about the rest of this area? How are you going to develop it? Well, we're going to have a wall right here, a partition right here to hide the substructure from this area right here. 
Uh, we're going to hide the air conditioning unit and uh, garden equipment, et cetera, so they can have another storage area. Oh, perfect. Area. All right, utilizing every bit of it. Now, another important part of structure, particularly when you're building a deck that's attached to a house like this, you would have to tie that decking into the house structure. How did you handle that, George? Well, in this case, we put our 2 by 10 pressure-treated ledger on the house. And we were lucky that we were able to crawl underneath the house and attach it directly to the house studs right here. Well, that's perfect. You shouldn't have any problem on that. I've heard a lot of those stories about people entertaining, having the parties with 20 people on the deck, and maybe something happening. I'm sure you won't get that call here. Not so. at this house, no. <laughs> now, there's a lot of different deck materials out there, and I understand you're trying something a little different than you've never tried before on this one. Yes, I've used all types of different uh, wood materials from hardwoods, Douglas fir, redwood. I've used them all. Well, Clients are more likely to use uh, or are calling me for maintenance-free materials now. And I'm trying something new. It's called Easy Deck. Well, Easy Deck is a pultruded fiberglass deck product. Um, what pultrusion is, basically, is they take continuous strands of fiber, pull them through a die to give these deck boards a complete unity, similar to how you would reinforce like a concrete pillar with rebar by continually pulling these strands of fiber through this pultruded die, you have incredibly great tensile strength, yet it weighs about a third the, the actual weight. Um, because it's fiberglass, it's non-porous, and what that means is basically you will never be able to stain it, mold won't be able to attach to it. If you have any type of tree above it, any type of dripping and whatnot, it won't be able to stick. Um, what that means for the homeowner is you've got a very strong, safe deck with a non-slip surface that is virtually maintenance free. All you'd really have to ever do to it is run a hose and maybe a sponge mop over it for life. It's time to check out this week's best new product with Danny and today's Homeowner Magazine Editor-in-Chief, Paul Spring. Brought to you by The Home Depot. You know, Danny, with all of the entries into the wood flooring market in the last few years, it can get a little bit confusing for homeowners when they're trying to choose a flooring. But there have been many advantages to that, too. And one of them is the warranty period has crept up and up with the different kinds of materials being used. Now, we picked the award flooring for a best new product because this is a wood floor, an engineered wood floor. You get the look, the depth, and the variation of real wood but it's in a product with a 20-year warranty on it. Now, I've heard five-year and I've heard 10-year warranties, but how could they possibly extend it to 20 years? What kind of finish does it have? Well, it's a ceramic finish, which is an advanced finish. It's much harder than, say, a polyurethane finish that you would use uh, on flooring at home. And as a result, it's just extremely durable. Okay, tell us about the veneer and the engineered approach to this wood. Sure, unlike real wood, uh, this uses a layered approach in engineered wood. It uses the, the hardwood uh, surface and then softwoods underneath it. Okay, tongue and groove as well. What about cost on this? Cost is uh, $7 per square foot. Okay, and a lot of variety in color? There is. You've got uh, 10 different species and 22 different colors, so there's a lot of choice there. Well, with a 20-year warranty and a great-looking variety of wood, this is good news for the homeowner. Well, it's been a couple days since we've been here in Rancho Santa Fe, and George has already completed the installation of the deck material on all three levels. George, it looks like you're in the process of tying these decks together with the stairs. Yes, we're uh, completing the installation by putting the last few stringers in and putting the clips on so we can get the deck boards on to tie the whole thing together. Okay. Well, now, the first time you use this material, what do you think of it? It's an excellent product. I'm very happy with the way it's coming out. It's very simple to use and uh, just very easy to learn how to do. I understand the homeowners are real happy with it as well. They're very happy. I think they're going to be uh, excited about the, the maintenance aspect of it and the non-skid surface on it. So yeah, I know that was something that was real important to them because you hate to have anything that would be real slick anytime you had a wet situation. Well, what about installation? Take us through that part of it. Well, the installation was pretty straightforward. We took these clips which ran an eight-foot lengths and then we just laid them on every single joist here, screw them down with a cordless gun, and then uh, we cut the laid the boards right on the clips and then just clipped them right on and they were cut with an abrasive uh, blade on a, just a standard saw. So installation was very straightforward. And I noticed you have um, a cap board here that just um, kind of sealed all the ends off. Yes, the, the edge trim here is really nice because it keeps you from having to paint everything. 
And uh, then we have these screws that go on and the decorative cap to hide the screws. It looks like a real finished product. It really does. I mean, and, and you really moved along real well with it. I'll let you get back to your stairs there. Great. And as George mentioned earlier in the show, he's built a lot of decks using wood. And really, most of the decks in the country are built out of wood. Now, that can be redwood, that can be different types of hardwood, and many decks are built out of pressure treated wood as well. But any of those wood decks do need a good bit of maintenance and regular maintenance to keep them looking good and to make them last a long time. Earlier this week, we visited another one of George's jobs that he built a couple years ago. It's a redwood deck and gives us an opportunity to give you some tips on how to properly maintain a wood deck. One of the most common questions I get from homeowners about wood decks is how can I keep my new wood deck looking new? Well, the answer is you really can't because it's going to weather and it's going to slowly deteriorate. But you certainly can slow that process down by addressing the two particular problems that you have with wood deck, that's sunlight and water. Now, sunlight will break down any finish that you may have on your deck. Water will get into the pores of the wood, expand and contract, and cause it to crack. Once it cracks, more water gets in, more deterioration takes place. So regular maintenance is the only way you can really have a deck looking good for an extended period of time. So keeping it washed regular and applying a good sealer or waterproofer will really make it look better longer. Now this particular case, there's also a number of problems with the fasteners, both the screws and the nails that have backed out a little bit. I see a number of screws here that need to be re-screwed down and maybe tightened down a little bit more than they originally were. This will prevent any trip hazard that may occur and again, prevent any water from getting down around that screw or nail. Now in the same way that these nails back out, can also back out on stairs and railing parts such as your baluster and spindles. They need to be addressed as well. With the steep grade we have next to this deck, really makes it important to check the stability of all the handrails and spindles and balusters newel post because the sun and the rain will loosen these occasionally and you may have to come back in and do a little toenailing to really secure them well. So if you occasionally will inspect your fasteners and waterproof your deck regularly, you shouldn't have any problem over the years keeping your deck looking good. Now, let's go outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Jennifer Brennan. Brought to you by Scott's Lawn Products for a great lawn, guaranteed. Most gardeners pick their favorite colors when they choose plants for their garden, but you can use color to create different effects in your garden. Now, how does that work? How can you use the different color plants to, to change your garden look? Well, Danny, this is a great example. In this dark, shady corner, this gardener actually used these hot, vibrant colors to draw your attention. These pop out at you. Mm -hmm. And you use either hot colors like the yellows, reds, and oranges to grab attention and to advance in the garden. And then you use the cool colors like the blues and lavenders and pinks to recede and calm in the garden. Now, how do you work these all these different color plants together to get the overall look you want in your garden? Well, a great example would be this, this narrow planting bed. Again, if the gardener would put blue flowers across the back, they would recede and you'd get much greater depth in this garden. So don't choose just your favorite color when you're choosing your plants. Choose the ones that will really make the garden and look the best. Well, a little more work here on the stairs and this deck will be complete and ready for the aluminum handrails George will be installing around the perimeter of the deck. Now, he's holding off on installing the handrails until the spa is in place. It's going to be a lot easier to put the spa over the edge of the deck without the handrails being in the way. Now, this easy deck material runs about the same as the Trex material, around $20 to $25 per square foot installed. Now, this compares to $10 to $15 a square foot for a wood deck. Now, like we always say, take your time on selecting the materials for your deck as well as the deck design. Hey, thanks to George and Steve for showing us around San Diego and letting us look at some of the great decks they're building. I'm Danny Lipford. We'll see you next week here on today's Homeowner. Hey.